Yes, folks, it's John G. Sutton here, Tales from the Jails. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about a rather strange character. It's the Met again, isn't it? The Metropolitan Police. There seems to be something seriously wrong with these people who work for the Metropolitan Police, you know? Uh, it, it, this guy is a commander, you know, which is above a chief superintendent. A commander, he's police commander... Sir Stephen House. So he's managed to get himself a knighthood. You've got to be suspicious of these bastards who've got, you know, been tapped by the by the king or the queen or whatever it is, you know. MBE, CBE, OBE, or oh bloody hell. That's what I say, yeah. Anyway, Sir Stephen House, who is a commander in the Metropolitan Police, has been making statements about females who make complaints about being raped. Believe it or not, Sir Stephen House said that he thinks that the vast majority of females who are complaining about being raped by men are actually experiencing what he calls regretful sexual encounters. In other words, they're basically complaining that they didn't enjoy it. And so they thought they'd think that they'll go to the police. Now, Listen, my experience of, of dealing with, with, with people who are making complaints to the police is this. It's a very onerous thing to do. It's, it's very stressful, it's very difficult, and, and for a lady to actually come forward and say that she has been physically molested and violated by a man is a very stressful thing to do. And for this half-baked idiot I hope you heard that Sir Stephen House half-baked idiot to say things like that is an insult to the integrity of the female population of this country it's a complete insult uh, that the ladies have, do not have the absolute integrity of their personal but it's a violation goodness me how would he like to be held down and have something inserted into his private parts eh? without permission? This is diabolical. This just shows how out of touch the Metropolitan Police, or certainly this half-baked idiot commissioner, is out of touch with reality. And of course we've got situations in the Metropolitan Police where... Uh, Groups of officers, including a bloody chief inspector, have been forming a paedophile ring and passing round indecent images of children. What kind of pervert wants to do that? I mean, this... I mean, obviously, they are mentally ill. But mentally ill people, people who are psychologically damaged, should not, under any circumstances, be put in positions of authority whereby they have discretions over over the general population and to a certain extent the police do i mean we look upon the police to actually protect us and to come in our hour of need if when we ring 999 or 111 or whatever it is i don't know uh, and uh, an officer turns up at our door we don't expect to be violated or treated with disrespect or to be told by a commander in the Metropolitan Police, oh, this is probably just uh, you're being a little bit uh, circumspect here because you didn't enjoy your sexual encounter. What kind of a nutcase does that? The Metropolitan Police, folks. That's what does it. And and now they're actually saying they've actually admitted that they are not interviewing police candidates on a face-to-face -face basis. They're doing it, you fill in a form, you know. It's, Matt, what's your name? Ronnie Biggs. Do you have any criminal convictions? Uh, I want to be a policeman, so no, I don't have any criminal convictions, no. Yeah. Are you a law-abiding citizen? Well, yeah, well, I'm not robbing trains and violating people and generally acting as a mug for the, for the mob. Yeah, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I do what Ronnie and Reggie say anyway. Oh, the idiots. Eh? I mean, it, what half-baked 
idiot doesn't it's probably Commander Sir Stephen House yeah but they've got a think tank in, in uh, Westminster somebody wants to get hold of the think tank and rattle the bastard heads to get together they don't believe me that they've got a think there's been programs on radio 4 about this think tank they come up with crazy ideas crazy ideas folks yeah, whereby they say, oh, I know what we'll do. Uh, we'll extend the motorways. We'll get rid of the uh, hard shoulder. Yeah, get rid of the hard shoulder. Sc let's call it smart motorways, yeah. It's that kind of smart motorway that if you break down, you get a 20-ton truck up your ass. <coughs> 60 miles an hour. They go 58 miles an hour, don't they? Mm. But you get one of them ramming in the back of your uh, 1972 uh, mini countryman eh you'll soon find out about that won't you what bloody cuckoo thought of that there's not only that i mean you, you've got to look at it this way they're recruiting into the police now they say they openly want to recruit diverse so they're actually discriminating against large white males discriminating against them and recruiting small ethnic minority females so that when you press 999 because there's a, a gang of louts outside your house you get some 5 foot 2 inch 22 year old young lady comes I'll do it otherwise I ain't hit you with my handbag that kind of bollocks eh? it's the same thing in the prisons isn't it I told you about this uh, prison advertisement that they've got well, they've got this half-baked woman. I mean, she's all right, I suppose. I mean, I keep going on this half-baked. They just don't seem to me to be thinking straight. You know, that's why I say half-baked. They're not thinking straight. Anybody can be a prison officer. I mean, you can't say that. Not anybody can be a prison officer. It takes a certain degree of integrity and a, a, a firmness of mind and determination to deal with the people that you're dealing with. Some of these are seriously corrupting uh, influences alpha males big alpha males who will be attractive to women because women like dangerous men believe it or not they, for some reason they do and they get themselves into that position in the prison service where they find themselves running drugs or, or s smuggling tobacco and all sorts of that. mobile phones sim cards all that taking that stuff into prisons for them and then they end up banged up themselves I and honestly it makes you wonder what this world is coming to anyway listen I previously mentioned this before on uh, Monday we've got uh, Charlie Charlie Bronson Charlie Salvador up for parole so at 8 o'clock in the morning let's all join in and say a little prayer that he sees sense and he, he convinces the parole board that he's safe because I'm sure that at the age of 70 he is and that uh, all the violence is gone and he can safely transfer into society and I sincerely believe that now uh, I had people commenting on the state of my office and the decorations so I said that I would show you uh, my other side of my office which is behind me yeah there's quite a lot of this you know it's all crazy I know my wife hates the place she refuses to tidy it up so it's a bloody tip uh, well my desk is a tip anyway the rest of it's fairly a tip as well <laughs> here we go I'll show you the back the rest here we go I think I'll be able to see this see if you can see Batman behind me there we are oh there's the there's the Joker yeah I don't know, where's, the, where's Batman oh there he is in the corner over there can you see him Batman yeah and there's loads of course uh, that's a signed photograph of Frank Bruno that's the Joker on the other side we've got uh, oh yeah there we have it yeah. let's see if I can put the lamp round there oh there you are see that that's a warthog and stuff there a little bit you'll see that can you see that that's a a sign from a, a ghost train 
proper one. It's, uh, it dates back to the 1960s, I believe, 1960s, yeah. And uh, there's foxes' heads and uh, horns. One of my top hats. Uh, there you can see at the back that is a wild boar, the head of a wild boar that dates from 1878 in France and it was on display in a pub called the Boar's Head in Deansgate, Manchester and that was there for a good 40 years I suppose, yeah you can see my banjo down there and my ovation celebrity deluxe guitar and uh, as I say there's the Joker, there's Batman in the back you can just about see Batman I suppose yeah my jukebox what else have we got, oh yeah we've got the hanging man that's hanging from the wall up there and uh, down there we've got, you can see what a tip it is and that's my uh, 1950s Grundig uh, magic eye radio which works very well by the way and that's a picture of my old e-type jag mm. and a snake that's a a cobra a king cobra you can see that yeah another war and of course you, you've seen a lot of the rest of it so there you have it there a little bit more of a visitation around my office mm -hmm. So now we've got to the point where I'm going to make a horrible noise again. I'm going to sing you a song, which I hope sincerely that you're going to enjoy. Larry objects to this, I know. But really, at the bottom of it all, he's, he's in the fan club, aren't you, Larry? You sing along, don't tell me you don't, Larry, you do. Yeah, And Catherine, of course, who enjoyed her. I'll take you home again, Kathleen. Yeah, well... I might do another one of Josie Flock. I like Josie Flock. My heart is broken, but what care I? That's from the White Horse Inn, by the way. Goodbye. And uh, Paula, of course, is a regular, regular commentator here. And thanks for all your comments, by the way. I do read them, and I respond, as you know, if I possibly can. Occasionally miss a few, but I don't try to try to get them all answered. So this is a little uh, song that I'm going to sing you now. It's by a lady from Rochdale, yeah, which isn't far away from Larry's Rotherham. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a lady from Rochdale called Gracie Fields, and I quite like this. It's uh, it, it made me think about it because that uh, is it Susan Gray, the lady from uh, Parliament who did the investigation into uh, our then Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. And uh, it just made me think of her. If you look at my TikTok channel, Jailer John, you'll see that, it, that, it, that this song is actually on there, but only a little snatch of it. Let me just show you that in case you w want to watch. I took me home to a party. There you go. So that's what I put up there on my uh, TikTok channel for Jailer John. Now I'm going to sing you a little song now, which is that song, I Took My Harp to a Party. I remember a Christmas gone by when I was extremely upset. A night in December, an evening that I would very much rather forget. For I took my heart to a party, but nobody asked me to play. The others were jolly and hearty, but I wasn't feeling so gay. They might have said, play us a tune we can sing. But somehow I don't think they noticed the thing. I took me up to a party, but nobody asked me to play. So I took the damn thing away. They asked Mrs Morgan to play her mouth organ and somebody else did a dance. They let Mrs Carter perform a sonata. 
But I wasn't given a chance. A North Country person called Sandy McPherson played bagpipes and took off his coat, while both the Mrs. Forces burst out of their corsets in trying to make the top note. But I took my harp to a party and nobody asked me to play. The others were jolly and hearty, but I won't feel in so gay. I felt so ashamed as to not strike in a note that I tried to hide the thing under me coat. I took me up to a party. But nobody asked me to play, so I took the damn thing away. They sang home sweet home on the banks of Loch Lomond, and as the king's horses then trees, when nephews and nieces kept playing their pieces and spreading their jam on the keys. A daughter called Laura played her concertina. We all played ridiculous games. I, old Mr. Dyer, set his whiskers on fire and a fire engine played on the flames. Oh, I took my harp to a party and nobody asked me to play. So I took the damn thing away. Thank you very much. That's Tales from the Jails today. Not that that little lot had anything to do with it. But hey, Charlie Bronson, Charlie Salvador on Monday. Good luck, mate.